show you how you can use Octant to recreate a Nobel winning prize experiment. So what we're going to do is create a Bose-Einstein condensate. So anyone can do this from your couch. You can register on our website and do these experiments for free. So essentially the first thing you do is once you've registered and you've logged in, you'll end up on a My Jobs page. And this is where all of the jobs that you've created, all of the experiments you've done, you can access that data, either if it's through the web app or through the Python API. We have two different types of jobs that you can do. The first is creating a Bose-Einstein condensate, and the second is creating that condensate and then projecting light onto it to manipulate those atoms. And what I'm gonna show you is generating a BEC. So we click on the BEC generator, and what you see are essentially the most important parameters that you need to have to create a BEC. There's several stages that are done to create a Bose-Einstein condensate, but most of them aren't fun. So we've taken care of that for you and we've given you the control of the fun stuff. And that fun stuff is, is once a cloud of atoms are created, is they move towards an atom chip. And that chip sends RF signals to remove those last warm atoms and create a very condensed atoms called a BEC. So the first parameters we have are called RF frequencies. And you can adjust these frequencies to adjust what energy of atoms you want to remove from the cloud. The higher energy atoms are essentially warmer and then you eventually want to cool it off by staging a series of cooling stages of removing lower energy atoms. The next step is the RF powers. So this is telling you how strong you're going to blow those atoms away. The higher power you use, the higher probability you're going to remove atoms of that energy, but you're also going to reduce the number of atoms that are in your cloud. So it's always a balance of how cold you want your BEC and how many atoms you want into it. So once you have set your parameters, you've customized your BEC, you give it a name. You can name it anything you want. I'm gonna be generic, I'll call it a BEC. And then the last parameter is called the time of flight. So once you've created your condensate, you wanna understand more about it. And the way you do that is by taking a snapshot image. You're essentially imaging its wave function. So after the BE is formed in a trap, you release it from that trap, and that's when the thermal atoms will start to expand and the condensate sort of stays together. And you can choose at what time you want to take that measurement. And so you can understand how classical or how quantum that BCC is behaving. I'm going to leave it at the default settings. And then after that, all it is is clicking on submit. So now what you see is when it shows pending, your job is sitting in line in a queue and getting ready to be run on our system. Once it turns to running, it means it's accepted all of the, all the information that you've provided it and it's running the job. It's creating your own custom BEC. It takes time because you're actually working with real atoms. So those atoms have to work its way up to the trap and they have to cool off. And so that's essentially, you just gotta wait for that uh, BEC to create. So what's actually happening in Octant after you've submitted a job? This is a dual vacuum cell chamber called a Rubeki. Rubidium atoms are ejected into the bottom cell and we use lasers to cool them and move them up into the upper chamber. The upper chamber is surrounded by magnetic coils and we create a magnetic optical trap to make a cloud of atoms that are cooled to the hundreds of nano Kelvin. That cloud is moved towards an atom chip. And this is where the signals that we just sent, those RF signals, are sent to the, uh, the cloud and we're ejecting those last phases of atoms that are thermal. It is here that the Bose-Einstein condensate is created and then it's released from the trap and at the time we chose 12 milliseconds, is then when we take the image of the expanding cloud. Once it's done, click on your job, and now you're gonna be able to see an image of your own Bose-Einstein condensate. What you're looking at here is at the time of 12 milliseconds, you took a snapshot of the BEC, and that's by shining laser light onto the condensate and measuring the optical density. That information is used then to calculate the characteristics of that BEC. This one in particular was almost 15,000 atoms in the condensate, and it was only 70 nanokelvin. 
So that was 70th of a degree above absolute zero. We just created a space that was the coldest space in the entire Earth at the time. So we have just recreated a Nobel winning prize experiment, which is a Bose-Einstein condensate.